Although many times in an econ course, dealing with changes in aggregate supply are a little tougher, uh, they're actually fairly easy when we deal with them in this Phillips curve model because there's just one less curve to deal with. So let's suppose that we have some kind of shock that causes aggregate supply to shift. So we'll start off with a leftward shift of aggregate supply. We'll call this an oil shock. So we have some kind of change in the availability of oil, which you know, we'll call it an embargo. So there's a, a decrease in the supply of oil, which is an input price. And that shifts the whole aggregate supply curve to the left. So now we are producing here. We have stagflation, as we talked about earlier in the course. So we have an increase in the price level accompanied by an increase in unemployment, which is a particularly ugly situation in an economy, especially for the politicians who happen to be running it at the time. So if this is the situation that you're in, uh, you have now got, like I said, stagflation, high unemployment, and high inflation. Uh, again, we're going to talk about this in absence of fiscal policy because we know that ultimately the best thing that we can do to solve this problem is just to let it readjust in the way that we looked at in the first video. Uh, we're going to come back to, by the way, issues with just letting things adjust in the whole fiscal policy argument shortly. So um, just for now, understand that I'm not broad brushing the whole concept of whether or not there should be uh, fiscal steering or so on. All right, but in the meantime, this is a leftward shift of the short-run aggregate supply curve caused by an oil shock. And that is as easy as redrawing the new short run Phillips curve, which is going to shift, whoops, which is going to shift to the right. <clears throat> and that's our first our short run adjustment. So this is what happens in the short run when we have this initial oil shock or the embargo. Now over time, as we know, the unemployment that is experienced by producing below our potential is going to cause wages to fall and eventually aggregate supply is going to shift back to the right. And that means the short run Phillips curve is going to shift back to the left and we end up back where we started. Again, this would be in the long run provided that there was no intervention. So we renumber these like we talked about in the last video. We'll call the blue ones number one. This first aggregate supply shifted left, causing Phillips curve to shift to the right. And then after that, aggregate supply shifted back to the right, causing short run Phillips curve to shift to the left. So notice that at both points we return to our original starting point, our original price level and output, and uh, that is what politicians ought to do in most situations where there is this kind of uh, a, you know, a crisis, uh, provided they have the political wherewithal to last or provided that there isn't some other kind of fiscal need. Uh, and this brings us into the whole debate about fiscal and monetary policy in terms of whether or not we should employ them or not. I'm going to just say briefly here that you know, we're going to leave that, to that normative discussion outside of this part of the course for now. Um, but I'll attach the caveat to everything we've been talking about with Phillips Curve. Uh, which is that I think most economists would agree that if left to its own devices, this is how the economy will adjust without influence uh, from the federal government or the Federal Reserve. To say otherwise is to say that the laws of supply and demand just don't even hold. Uh, on the other hand, so the, the, you know, the issue isn't really, is it work or does it work this way? The issue is, can we afford to wait that long? And, and that remains to be a subject of debate among politicians and citizens, you know, and economists and so on. So although uh, we're kind of skirting the issue here by, by putting it like that, I'm just say for now that it's not that there's a disagreement that these adjustments wouldn't happen. It's that, can we afford to wait that long? In any case, uh, an adjustment on the supply side is fairly easy. Before I switch and go to the increase in supply, let's just review it one more time. Uh, first, we have a decrease in aggregate supply caused by an oil shock. That's considered a rise in input prices. So we have high inflation and we have high unemployment. Um, the result of that also can be seen as a rightward shift of the short run Phillips curve. Over time, unemployment drives wages back down, which shifts aggregate supply back to the right and shifts the short run Phillips curve back to the left and we return to equilibrium. Again, this would be provided there was no further intervention. Um, we just let the economy self-adjust. All right, now by this point, these should start getting kind of intuitive to you. So we'll do one final example before we move on to an AP question. And this one is just going to look at an increase in aggregate supply. So now we will say that we are in the midst of a technology boom. So we have found that across the board, more people or I should say, uh, you know, productivity is up. People are able to produce more in their jobs. It's just productivity is up in general. So we have this increase in aggregate supply due to a technological boom. So here's where we're at now. As you can see, this is going to cause the price level to go down and the output level to go up. So we have you know, price level one, 
and price level 2. Now, so what should we do in a situation like this, or how could we handle a situation like this? Again, remember, we're going to have extremely low unemployment here. This will cause, oh, we need to show what's going to happen on Phillips' curve. So if we had a rightward shift of aggregate supply, that means we're going to have a leftward shift of the short-run Phillips' curve. And then over time, if nothing is done, we know that eventually, uh, as very high levels of unemployment are, or very high levels of employment are reached. There's going to be that bidding up for workers. That might be an increase in resource cost. Now, what we really see here is kind of a uh, a reconfiguration of the ratio between labor and capital pricing. And that's ultimately one of the things that the Phillips curve is kind of uncovering, is that there's a certain workable ratio in place in terms of the value of capital and the value of labor. And if those get too far out of whack, they'll be adjusted by, or they'll be corrected by adjustments to short-run aggregate, or to aggregate supply and demand. How does this look in the long run? As we know that over time, people's expectations will adjust. As expectations adjust, the short-run aggregate supply would shift back to the left. The short-run Phillips curve would shift back to the right and we return back to our original output and price level and that's it so let's just summarize real quick you know the general rules for Phillips curve as we've talked about in other videos um, number one as there a shift in aggregate demand is movement along the aggregate supply curve movement along the aggregate supply curve is movement along the Phillips curve in the other direction however when there's a change in aggregate supply there is a change in the Phillips curve in the opposite direction. If there's a change in aggregate demand and that causes you know, an increase or movement along the Phillips curve, this is associated with wages or expected and actual inflation being out of touch or the actual expected prices being out of touch. As people's wages or their expectations adjust, the graph would shift back to where it belongs. 